Hello everybody, welcome to Rush Reality. My name is Sam, thank you for joining me. There has been some really cool announcements over the last couple of weeks. CES has happened and we've got some exciting things around the corner. So I thought it was time we jumped in and discussed it. Now you might have already heard, but the biggest news came from HTC as they announced their much awaited Vive XR Elite. This is a headset that's clearly a direct competitor to Meta's Quest Pro. Now we knew this was coming, but it's great to see it finally laid out. Now this looks like a really cool headset. It's clearly in that sort of next gen of headsets. We're starting to see everything get condensed and really focused on things like comfort and wearability. Now it definitely looks like they've got customers looking at the Meta Quest Pro in their sights when they put this thing together. And they even made a few swipes directly at Meta in the presentation. Now the headset looks pretty good. It's 2K per eye. It's comfortable, it's very similar form factor to that of the Quest Pro. It's capable of mixed reality and it even has a depth sensor. That's what we saw removed from the Quest Pro before launch. So maybe it will be better at mixed reality than the Quest Pro. Time will tell on that one. With regards to price, they've undercut the Quest Pro. The touted number is $1,100, but they've been a little bit cheeky with the price there because that number doesn't include tax. And they clearly know that people are gonna compare it to the Quest Pro price that is advertised with tax. So in reality, you'll be paying slightly more than that. Here in the UK, it's about 1,299 pounds. So still less than the Quest Pro, but only slightly. Not quite the attractive proposition it sounds like when they tout that small number. Now when you're comparing the two, it's worth mentioning that there's no face tracking or eye tracking built into this XR Elite. That does mean it's not quite as equipped as the Quest Pro. So maybe it's worth paying that slight bit extra to get those features built in. We do know that there's gonna be a facial tracker coming later down the line, but that would likely be an additional add-on and could maybe take you up to the same kind of price. So have HTC made a truly competitive alternative here, or is it just an alternative for people that don't want to buy into Meta? Hopefully we'll be able to try one soon and we can see for ourselves. Next up, we had Sony taken to the stage trying to build the hype for the PSVR 2, and they gave us some very exciting news for games. The big one is that Gran Turismo 7 is getting a free VR update. That is awesome news. We've been expecting this for some time. GT7 is an awesome game. It's a perfect fit for VR, and it could be one of the most competitive titles on the platform. For me, that's a headset seller. I've already put countless hours into GT7 in flat screen on the PS5, I can't wait to try my VR headset and take it to the next level. They also announced that Beat Saber is coming to the PlayStation VR 2. Now that's not so exciting for me. I've already got loads of platforms I could play Beat Saber on. I'm unlikely to pick it up for the PlayStation. But it was really interesting because Beat Saber is a property owned by Meta. I really didn't think we would see that land on the PlayStation. It clearly shows that Meta are adapting their way of working and maybe they could be opening that wall garden a little bit. We can only hope. Next up, we saw three really interesting VR or AR devices from TCL. TCL aren't a name that we usually mention much in the VR space. They're a Chinese company usually known for making things like TVs. The first device they unveiled was the Nextwear S glasses. These are a kind of small form factor glasses frame that is able to put in a 130 degree screen, very similar to what we've seen with things like the Enreal Air. I have to say the form factor here looked pretty good. They're quite a stylish bit of eyewear. The S glasses can be paired to almost any device. They showed it on iOS devices. They showed it on a Switch. Really cool, really interesting. I'd love an opportunity to try them out. But it actually turned out to be the least interesting of the three devices they were there to discuss. The next one was the Ray Neo X2. These are a pair of true AR glasses. They use a pair of binocular micro LED screens that project a wide picture across the entire frame. And they showed off some really fun tricks. They demoed photo and video, navigation, and even live translation. Just imagine, you could be traveling the world, having conversations with people from anywhere, like something out of a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. Very cool, and the glasses themselves look sleek and stylish. But that takes us to their most exciting project, which was the Nextwear V headset, a true VR headset from a new competitor in the market. This thing was touting some really cool specs. Through the use of two 4K screens, they're able to get a pixel density of 1512 PPI. That is more than double what you get on the Quest 2. We will be looking at a very clear and sharp picture. Not only that, but they've got what they've described as an ultra wide FOV at 108 degrees. It doesn't say how they've measured that, whether that is horizontally or diagonally, but if they're describing it as ultra wide as one of their key selling points, I'm hoping it's that horizontal number and things are really starting to get wider. The headset is also capable of pass through and mixed reality through the use of two cameras mounted on the front of the headset. This is a really exciting bit of gear, but sadly this was 
just the first announcement and we weren't given any release date. Our next launches came from a very surprising company. Razer, famous for their PC gaming peripherals, have decided to release two Quest 2 accessories. First we've got a head strap with a really interesting design. It looks like it could be very comfortable and very different to everything else on the market. They've also announced a facial interface to take on the likes of VR cover that they claim will increase immersion through blocking out more light. They both look pretty cool and it's interesting to see one of the bigger companies getting into the accessory space. So far, all the Quest 2 accessories have come from small independent companies. Our last update came from Shift All, who've been showing off their small form factor headset for the last few CESs, but we've never really had anything firm given. Well, that looks set to change because they've announced the headset will be fully released early this year. I've always thought this is a high potential headset, it could be really good, and I hope the fact it's been in development for so long means that they've polished it and it'll be a really good experience. So that's the updates. I think there's some really exciting stuff there, and we've had a pretty good run of it lately, with things coming in from all over the place. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, then press the like button, and I would love to see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.